you mentioned you were in the middle of writing a book. What's yeah. next for you? What, what, what can we expect for you? We know you have been extremely successful and I'm going to have you back on the show. Anytime. Because I would love to have a conversation because I'm sure some people are going to come and be like, yo, I expected to hear about you know, it's, radar. It's, it's about no music. <laughs> <laughs> so we can come back and we'll have a whole different Listen, conversation. Let, 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 to be honest with you, the dope part about this conversation is this helps me with the book because I don't know how to talk about myself. So as I'm talking to you, I'm just recording my conversation for myself. There you go. Because you're triggering things in me that I don't even think about. Like, you're helping me see things that I don't even realize. So for me, it's like, I want to do a part two to talk about music because those stories come out too, but it's like, we can't talk about like the X's and O's, because the X's and O's don't matter unless you figure out why you're gonna deal with the X's and O's. Like, it's like, it's like, hey, you ready to go through some pain? I mean, no, I don't want to. But if I tell you why you're going through it, then I helped you see why the pain is worth it. There you go. Then I, so for me, it's like, you know, I mean, I've been, it's so funny because I've been, I, I had to do a bio like six times and they're like, let's talk about the hits you got. I'm like, that shit is irrelevant, man. My biggest hit is that I became the man that I dreamt to become. Music was my way out, man. It wasn't I, like, not only, like, I hate people that brag on their genius. It's like, nigga, your, our genius comes from a place of desperation. So why would you brag on your genius to desperate people? You gotta help them see that their desperation, that that you were right there at that moment. Whoever listened to this, I was right there in the projects. I was right there where you didn't know what you was gonna do, and I made it out. I made it out. I can't even stun on you about how smart I am. Cause I became smart out of desperation. But I know you're desperate. So use that desperation to take you where you wanna go. Use that pain to take you where you wanna go. Don't soak in it. Don't feel bad. And don't think nobody's coming to fucking rescue you. You are your superhero. Be your own superhero. Period. I'm a, I, dog, I, I don't care what no one thinks about me. Because like I told you, I'm the superhero to my 16-year-old self. Nigga, that's my goal. And, and, and I think that that's a wonderful place and a wonderful goal to have. I really, really do. I, I don't think you realize, or maybe you do, uh, just how many people you are going to affect in such a positive way with your willingness and your openness to share your truth, not your accolades, not, not, not your accolades. Nah, it's the accolades. Not the accolades, but accolades your accolades truth. Listen, listen, I'm gonna tell you something, man. And I got so many ideas that I wanna do. Like, I know I'm writing a book for myself, but I'm writing a, I wanna write a book on how the entertainment world made me who I am. But not the way you think though. Not like, man, the entertainment world, like I want people to understand that I learned more from Jay-Z than I did my own dad. Like my dad is like, my dad was like, my dad is the reason why I'm here because when he died, it didn't matter to the world. And I remember his name was Raymond Daniels. And I remember being at his, 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 his wake and I was sat with his body and I held it. And I was like, I'm going, you can rest in peace knowing that me, Tiffany, Michael, my mom and Alexis, who my niece, oldest niece that was born are going to be okay. I got us. Now this is me on the worst day of my life saying, I got us rest in peace. But I promise you, when this shit is over with, your name gonna matter. Cause your name is my name. I am the legacy. I just remember that. But I, but with that being said, I talk about, I remember not being liked in the business. And I remember, you know, when I was coming up, niggas thought I was too aggressive. Jay-Z has a line in one of my favorite Hove songs. All I need is the love of my crew. The whole energy can hate me. I thug my way through. That was my confidence. Like, but shit, it, all he needed was to love his crew. Like, that was my confidence. Um, I, I used to always look back on my past and then Jay-Z has a line saying, hove on that new shit. Niggas like, how come? Niggas want my old shit, buy my old albums. It was like, he's like my fucking professor. And he's telling me 
nigga, why are you talking about the shit I did, nigga? If you want to talk about the shit I did, you go live in the past. I'm going forward. There you go. He said, he said niggas on that blue, niggas talking something. I'm on, niggas stuck on the blueprint. I'm stuck on, I'm on some new shit. He talks about this whole shit. And it was like, and the song's called On to the Next One, On to the Next One. And I'm like, nigga, on to the next one, Ray. I don't even want to brag about what I did, nigga. I'm on to the next one. Like this shit is like my Bible. Like it's really like, so I feel, it's like, so I mean like Rocky five, Rocky four, where he fought the Russian. Like this is literally, I'm telling you like shit that is like, I watched that stuck with me that made me who I am. Rocky four, he's fighting the Russian in Russia. They hated him. He was supposed to die in the ring because his best friend died in the ring. And he, he fought so hard that by the time we get to the round eight or nine, the Russians are cheering for Rocky. And then he wins it and he's like, I could change so you could change. We changed today. So for me, it's like, so when my family was saying, you ain't shit, it's like Rocky Four is going through my head. Keep fighting, nigga, they gonna eventually cheer for you. But if you lie down, your movie don't exist. That shit, like, I got tears in my eyes because I remember this shit. Like, I remember y'all are clowning me. And, and the crazy part is that I'm from a nigga world. I'm from a world where rappers are celebrated. And I made my money with Ghost. I made my money with niggas that you gotta just know them. So it's like, so one of my cousins was dating the Shop Boys. This is when they had Party Like a Rockstar. And I remember it was like, you know, Raymond ain't shit, you know, he's fucking with, she's fucking with a shop boy. And I'm like, bro, I'm making three, $400,000 a year at this time. But my family couldn't celebrate it because it was nothing to brag on. It was like, oh, you guys got a song out on the Pussycat Dolls. Who the fuck is that anyway? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but y'all don't realize that we, that when I grow up made a million dollars in sync money. And, and 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 40% of that came to us. Y'all, they don't even understand. So they really laughed at me because it was like, what the, my mom to this day don't know what I do for a living. Neither does my mom. <laughs> she understands that I'm in the business. She understands that I'm, I'm, but my mom will meet an artist that I'm signing to my company and tell that artist, please don't forget about me and my son. And, and this artist will look at her like, we in your house, in your <laughs> mansion. Your son is saving me so I could buy my mom a mansion. And you're telling me not to forget him. But I would tell him, she doesn't know any better. You can't, like I said, you can't punish her because because she didn't have that in her. But her toughness put that in me. So I'm gonna show her and I'm gonna reward her. And that's what I do. I make sure she got everything she dream of. Nothing to worry about. I, I take care of my mom. And, and to me, it's like, so to me, it's like, I can't get mad at nobody for booing me. Nigga, they didn't know what to cheer for. Now they love me and cheer me on and like, Raymond is a shit. But it's like, I'm in Rocky round 11. I just kept fighting. And now they like, father man. Nigga, I knew I was from the beginning. I just knew that if I quit fighting, that y'all cheers will win, y'all booze will win. And I'm never gonna let nobody's booze win over me. Well said. Do it. Well said. Do it. But yeah, Ray, I'm in the middle of like like I, 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 I could talk about this all day with you. Um, and I'm definitely gonna have you back for part two. We gotta do part two where we talk strictly yeah. about X's and O's. But I wanna tell you one thing, cause I know we're wrapping up. The person that gave me my first shot in the music business, his name is D.Dot Angeletti. Shout to Derek, Derek Angeletti. So every time I would drive to New York to play him, the artist that we were working on, I would be at daddy's house around you. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, so every time I would come to New York, and th that was like, it goes back to that line with Jay-Z. So I never felt more alive than Ryan Shotgun and Klein's Green Five to the cops pull guns. Like, nigga, I never felt more alive than being in daddy's house and watching Puff walk around and he just signed New Edition. And nigga, New Edition is at the studio every day. And D-Dot is just like, 
you got to get your shit together. And I'm like, nigga, I'm in the room with you, nigga. I, I'm <laughs> going to get it. <laughs> nigga, I made it. My family don't even know. I'm in the room with New Edition. And it just like, so that was like, I was going to tell you, like, I, so I was around you. And I also, one of my, one of the guys I used to pass our flyers for with in 2003 and four, the whole year, he's, his name was, you probably didn't know him, but he was somehow a, on, it was a guy named Polo that he worked with. I don't know if you remember. Shout po- out to Polo. Yeah. Polo that had the, had the DJs. I yeah. remember. Yeah. So his partner and me passed our flyers together. So I know that they would be on calls with you. Mm-hmm. So I always knew. So the funny thing is, swear to God, I'm not even, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. My assistant comes to me and says, you know, Sean Perez wants to do an interview with you. I'm like, he know who I am? On God. How crazy is that? On God. The first thing popped in my head was, damn, that nigga know my name. <laughs> No, no, this is not me. I swear to God, that's why we started. I was like, I was waiting for somebody else to come on and be like, yo, so I work for Sean Prez. I'm, you know, I told him about you and, you know, and then you like telling me about myself. I'm like, this nigga really know me. <laughs> no. I'm thinking myself. No. That's how crazy life works. Well, here's, here's the deal, right? And, and, and number one, thank you for that. People, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very, very much like you. Like, yeah, I, I almost never to, to 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 the point where everybody's always you got to talk more about who you are, what you did. But that's yeah. just that's not showing, you know, it you doesn't try like happen for me. But it's crazy. And I guess we'll leave the audience with this point till we pick it up on part two. Your reputation, how you treat people. That is your legacy. That is the lasting effect. Now, if I had been a dickhead, if I had been somebody whose head was so swelled, yes, and 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 not had humility in my heart, you would probably Sean Prez want to do a to tell him screw him. Yes. Like, matter of fact, yeah, I, I want to do an interview with him just so I can curse him out and then be like, I'm out. Mick Joe Power Summit, 05. Remember, D Dot had an artist, he had, we had an artist signed to Jive. But he yep. was like, yo, my man, Prez going to help us out. I'm going to go to Sean Prez. So I remember, I, I, I'm around at all times. I just knew my role was to shut the fuck up. He'll know my name one day, but right now it's not about me. It's about D Dot doing what he got to do for us. You're right, brother. It's and, 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 and I'm awesome. so glad. I'm, I can't tell you, Ray. I'm so glad that you you're grounded enough to 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 help people understand you are not what you do. You're not. You are not what you do. You are yes. not the title you hold. Ah. You're not the people that you could say, "Oh, this person knows my name." No, yeah. you have, there has to be something more. That's what makes you a good human being. That's what makes people want to mess with you. So for everybody out there who you, in, in your head, you have this idea of what success looks like. And I have to be in conversations, name dropping. And I have to be in conversations talking about all of the things I'm doing because perception is reality and I want people to respect me, go play this conversation back. Period. There, there, there was no name dropping here. Period. There, that, there that. was no, I, I know this person, I work for that person. And there are two me- very successful people on each end of this conversation. That's what you should aspire for your life to look like. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.